Welcome to ABC Sports highlights of the third round of the National Panasonic Australian Open. At its halfway mark, this year's National Golfing Championship was really developing into a great contest. Peter Senior, the Queenslander, had joined Tom Watson in the lead at the halfway mark, just two strokes ahead of Ian Baker Finch, Bob Stanton and Greg Norman, who made a charge on the second day with a fine 67. So the makings for a great second half of the championship and conditions on the Saturday were once again magnificent with the temperatures climbing into the high 20s, beautiful clear sky and just a breath of wind coming from the south. We join our highlights now with Graham Dawson in commentary. This green has a general slope from the back to the front, but the position, uh, today's pin spot there, I think is the steepest part of the green. So if they have to put across hill, they have to allow plenty for the slope. There's the putt for two. Oh, that's a good chance. Oh, what a putt. Well, that's three under after seven holes, Bob Shearer. Coming back into the fight. Bob Shearer stands at four over. You saw him birdie the seventh, but he took a double bogey at the eighth. That's two long cuts, we've seen him <laughs> holding three holes. <laughs> Bob Stanton, for this long birdie putt. He's not on the putting surface, so he's elected to leave the flag in. Some players like it in, some players like it held, others like it taken out. Well, what a super putt. Very nearly made it. Flag set well back today. 21 metres from the front. So this putt of Greg's would probably be around about 9 metres, I suppose. This for three. Look at this. Come on. Oh, could you no. credit, Jack? That was absolutely in the heart of the hole. Look, still half the ball hanging over the edge. Uphill putt. Excellent chance. A couple of putts will take him to six under, but he won't be thinking that way. Great little attacking golfer, this Peter Senior. Got it, got it. Thank you oh. very much, Peter. You beauty. Oh, yes. A tremendous start, Jack. Yes, this is a big putt for him, Brian, early on the round. Still very nervous. If he get this in, he might just relax and enjoy himself. As Graham said, everyone's making four here, so he'll be disappointed if he doesn't make it. Oh, well. oh. Oh, that's a good feeling. Good feeling to do that early in the piece. Now, one thing that may complicate Watson's shot is he may be on a fairly sharp downslope, Jack, and that makes it all the more difficult to get the ball up quickly. Yes, I always felt the nearer you got to this green, the more difficult the shot became because uh, you can't get as much spin on the ball as uh, both Stanton and Baker Finch who were further back and therefore hitting fuller shots. So uh, the shot that Tom's got here is he's actually way below the green, so he's got to get the ball up and then get the spin on it. This oh, is a beautiful shot. Beautiful judge is that. Look at this. Ah, oh, the shot of a master, Jack. It'll just come a little bit from the right.
straight in the middle. So that's another birdie for Watson, and he goes into the championship lead by one stroke. We see Greg Norman at this delightful par three, the fifth. 161 metres. They fire over a valley, and the green set up on the other side of this shallow valley. Quite a sharp roll back from the front. So stepped up at least a couple of metres up off the floor of the valley. Beautifully bunkered, tight little green. One of the prettiest holes in the golf course. See how quick the green is. Lobbed at the back and started to suck back towards the hole. Very slick putt. And as Greg Norman lines up, well, this is a fair bit of right to left on this one for him too. This is for Birdie too. He's due for one. Can this be it? Can it? Can it? Yes, it can be. Oh, oh. Bitting his teeth, Greg Norman's moving along nicely. Another birdie. Great start by Norman. Three birdies in the first five holes, so he moves to six under for the championship and just one behind Watson. And Watson, who is uh, looking at this part now, he is just a hole behind. He would have heard all that cheering, and I would think he'd know exactly what the cheering was about. Well, we're going to have a ding-dong battle, I think, between these two principally, but let's not forget Peter Senior there, nor Baker Finch. Well, if you put the ball on the green somewhere to give yourself the best possible chance of holding a putt with this cup where it is, this is about where you'd put it. Uphill, right left. And there it is. That was the easiest of putts, uh, just that right lip. And he goes to eight under. Now, oh, this is the, uh, the sort of return match of their great, uh, the great occasion at St Andrews back in July. Baker Finch playing with Watson. Now, oh, he's looking at that uh, a little worried. I don't know why, that's the beauty. Good putt. That's a two. He's got the best putting stroke in Australia now. Oh, you? it's a beautiful stroke. Moment, here we are. Hole in one prize here. This man's very fond of smart cars, so he can pick one up here and put this in. Put it in the wrong hole, he won't get a motor car for that. So oh, it had to go, it had to go clear to the bottom. Oh, what a good try. My word, that was uh, as near as you could go without going in. I think he felt robbed there. That's four, a stroke drop to par on the seventh. Now, Clayton, with this putt, which will get him out of trouble on the ninth. Oh. Little on the high side there. What a pity. What a beautiful recovery. Third shot, and then he scored it. Now, that's a stroke drop there for him. And he'll slip back to three up. And Peter, how beautifully he kept down as he went through that shot. Now Watson for a birdie on the seventh. Oh, that was a bold putt too, but right in the middle. And he goes further ahead. Look at that smile. <laughs> now Bob Stanton from the very front right corner of the green. Oh, what a beauty. <laughs> Fabulous putt. Now, Baker Finch struggling here at the 10th. This is for par. Uh, 
Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, dear, that's just like Watson's on the lip. Now, now it's very unwise to be putting him one-handed like that. But that's a five, so he slips further back. This is for par four. Well, he's taking a lot of care about it. Perhaps it's a bit longer than it looks. Hmm. Well, thought the better of that. Well, that was three putts. Pretty sad. Now, this is the third shot of Greg Norman. Remember, he missed the green left amongst the people. And he's got this little chip and run shot. how he'd like put the grass between the ball and the club face the challenge is gradually slipping away really needs to make this one stay in close contact with Watson not to be so that'll be a bogey He's a little upset with himself at that chip shot he played. It wasn't a terribly difficult one. Now Peter Senior with this putt for a bogey. Come on, come on, come yes. on. Oh, you beauty. Well, what a putt. And what a great comeback by Stanton because after that double bogey at the sixth, he was back to one under for the championship, Jack, and now here he is at five under. Now, Clayton, long, long birdie putt. Coming across and down the slope. He's probably in the highest part of the green. Where he's aiming. As I said earlier, this will give you some idea of what Royal Melbourne's all about. Absolutely top class putt, Michael Clayton. Great touch. That's Peter Senior from just off the front edge. It looks like the green, but they cut the aprons down very, very close and fine. So it's almost like good putting green and he's putting from three or four meters off the front it's an eagle attempt but he's well pleased to get it close oh what a brilliant putt from off the green that was almost for an eagle well that's a certain birdie well leader by two Tom Watson Par 5, 14. Mm. I've elected to play the three wood for a second. Probably we'll have to play this one softly. If he hits a hot one that's turning from right to left, he could go right through. It was a good view at the top of the swing and the way he crosses the line a bit. I don't like it much. I think it might be going left thick bushes and rough there may have caught the trap but the way they're pointing I think he's just over that trap I think he might be up the face of the trap there Jack from the way he's climbing down I think he's in the sand yes oh yeah, and there's this oh my oh. goodness gracious super camera angle but look where that ball's gone look it's buried he's had one he's going to think about this now and just hacked it back out of that line it moved down probably just a half a meter only there for three now. 
and from that lie on an absolutely ugly position to try and get down in two to make par. So he had a hack at that with his wedge. Now gone back to the sand on to play this one. We chip it clean or explode it. Interesting to see. Gone for the explosion. Got it out nicely. Tiddler in for a four. That's a birdie. Now Watson for a five at this par five fourteenth, but potentially a birdie hole for him. That's not going to do it. So that's a bogey six. That will really hurt. Clayton. For par and nicely, sorry for birdie, that was nicely done. He was off the front, rolled that long putt up, nearly hold it. And that'll help him no end, that'll bring him to five. Clayton goes to five under, which is just one behind the lead. 16th bunker shot of Greg Norman, having pushed his tee shot into the bunker. Fairly straightforward shot. Played it well, but uh, I think what he's upset about is he wanted to start at the ball right at the hole and let the natural contour of the green run the ball down to the left. And I think he's a little upset with the bounce the ball took. Good putt for Baker Finch. It's another birdie, two in a row. So Baker Finch moves back into contention at three under par. Now Norman to save par from the bunker. I should say, having put his tee shot in the bunker, this for a three. Yes, good save. Really needed that one. And a big crowd around this green, really appreciating the great save from the bunker. Now Stanton, this is for par. Bad luck, Bob. Had to curve a little that way. Just put it outside the hole. They dropped a shot. Now, senior. It's going right also. Might be in Tiger Country there. What a most exciting afternoon it is, and this might be the most exciting shot of the day. There's Mike Clayton joining the lead. Beautiful birdie putt on the final hole. So around the day of 67 for Clayton, equal to the best of the championship, today's best score, and after 54 holes, Michael Clayton is six under. Birdie putt for Stanton. Beautiful tee shot. Best of the day on this hole. There's Mr. Tiddler on the last green. Let's see if he can recover. Top edge, right edge. No mistake there. That's right in the middle. Oh, isn't it great to see Bob Stanton really in contention? Yeah, with this 17th hole, birdie a ball. 22 birdies already here today from the field of 66. Can't be more than 30 metres away. Just to pitch up there and hope that it stops next to the flag. That's pretty good. Well, he judged that pretty well. That gives him a great chance of a four. Now, events at the 17th, Baker Finch. Long putt about 30 metres. Right up the green. When I say up, I mean uphill. That's a well-struck putt. Look at it, look at it, look at this, look at this. It's a birdie, oh. an eagle. Baker Fitch rises on the scoreboard to five under par now, sharing second line. There he is, just about stone dead by the cup. This putt for a birdie four.
will make him outright leader again at seven under. And so they go off to the final hole. Now Peter Senya. Terrible hole at the 17th. He'd love to forget that. Double bogey seven. Can still make amends, and this could get him to four under, and there'll only be three shots off the lead. This for birdie three on the last. Maybe it might have just missed. It was just on the left edge. And a round of 74 for Peter Senior. Three under after 54 holes. And now four behind Watson. Another pressure putt for Norman. the line. I think he moved a little on that one. And a round of 71 for Norman. Four under par for the championship. Three strokes behind Tom Watson. This is Stanton there in the deep rough. That rough is really quite lush there. So he'll do well to green this. His shot's about 190 metres. Need all his strength. That iron to get it right to the back of the green where the flag is. And he's hitting it straight into the sun. And he gave it all his might, but that's not uh, clean enough. He's in further bother, a long, long way from the flag yet. Now, meanwhile, back on this fairway is Tom Watson and Ian Baker Finch. He'll be first. Long time waiting here, just uh, worried about the wind, which it does uh, vary. One moment we look at the flags behind the scoreboard and they're barely fluttering. Next moment we look and they're out stiff. Uh, he has six iron there. Let's see if he gives it the full swing. Now he's inclined to hit those irons very gently. Oh, with good result, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, what Listen a to that. fantastic Listen shot. To that crowd go mad, Peter Thompson. That's They're tremendous thrilled shot. with the performance of this young man over these final two holes. Just about one metre. Well, I wonder now if Watson can match that. So, the final shot, the final approach shot for Tom Watson on this third day of our championship. That's pretty good too. Oh, it's shot right over the flagstick altogether, and it's way at the back of the green. Goodness me. Well, the last group walking to the 18th green, and just a few moments walking off the green, Greg Norman. And he's a couple of strokes off the lead. Here he is to talk with Tim Lane. Greg, a slightly disappointing finish. Do they sting a bit more when you've got all night to think about them? Oh, not really, Tim. I think it's... Uh... I was more disappointed from playing two shots. I played uh, one into seven and um, another one into uh, one of the back nine holes. And I know you don't do around Royal Melbourne and get too aggressive. Like on seven, I hit in the back bunker and I had no place. So I had to take four there and that was the best score I could take. And uh, then I made a couple of silly mistakes like hitting it over the back of the green here. There's one thing you don't do at Royal Melbourne is hit it through the greens. And uh, I didn't really, I played well in patches and I played poorly. So, you know, I could have been better and I could have been worse, I suppose. Well, for those of us watching on TV and around the 18th watching the leaderboard, it's been a thrilling, fluctuating day. Is it exciting for you on a day like that? Yes, it is. It surprised me, actually. Uh, yeah, well, that's Royal Melbourne. Let's put it down to that. And, uh, you know, you can get off to a fast start and then all of a sudden, bang, you hit one wrong shot and then you take six or seven or whatever. And, and we all know Royal Melbourne's like that. And Tom hasn't experienced it yet, but I think he's getting a little bit of a feel of it now. Do you like a situation like this where there's a real pack and you're in the middle of it? 
Uh, well, it doesn't bother me. I'm out there to win the golf tournament, irrespective of how many players have got a chance. And uh, I'm going out there tomorrow with the attitude of shooting a 65 or 66 and uh, don't give anybody else a chance. Thank you. Good luck. OK, thanks, Tim. Greg Norman, and he's not out of it yet either. He's uh, three behind, but uh, he could catch it up in nine holes or even six tomorrow. It'll be an exciting day. Now, here's Bob Stanton. Played three already. Still about 40 metres, or 35 anyway from the flag, struggling to make five. And this really is one of the toughest shots in the business, Peter. Uh, they got a lot of spin on it, and that's about halfway up to the flag. Still in bother, Bob Stanton. Now Watson flew that shot straight at the flag, but it was uh, really too hard altogether. And uh, he's about 18 metres past the flag, and he's off the green. Now, he's got a problem here. We we'll call him the king of the chippers, which he undoubtedly is. Made a marvellous little chip here yesterday. I think that Stanton might still be away, Peter. Watson went up to the flag and uh, nodded in Stanton's direction and said, well, I think it might be still your shot, Bob. Well, that... Uh, that's about to happen, that's true. Well, I don't know, I might still give it to Watson, but they have measured it themselves, and uh, Stanton's happy to putt. So, we'll have to wait another few moments till we see what happens to Watson. Baker Finch, of course, with that beautiful second shot, he's within a couple of metres of the cup. Now, Stanton must putt up that famous ridge So he's got to keep his wits about him here. Played four shots to there. Crowd here very tense as this championship of third day comes to its conclusion. Now this is the fifth shot on this final hole. That up to the cup. It is. It's a pretty good effort. Look at this. It's a good clap for that. But unhappily for him, that's a six. And a round of 72 today. Par figures for Bob Stanton. Four behind Watson at the moment. Of course, dropping two strokes on that final hole. Now it will be Watson leader by one over Mike Clayton and he must get down to two to retain that lead now let's see how this master goes about this shot now he lofted it short into the rough and it didn't get quite enough bounce for him but that's fair result well he didn't really have a chance to pitch it on the green and stop it short of the hole so he had to take that risk now he will mark and clean it if necessary, and stand back and watch Baker Finch. Well, this would be a great way to finish off this round. Pops this in. Now, am I right? He got three at the 15th, three at the 16th, three at the 17th. And a birdie four at the 14th at the before 14th. that. Peter, so if he knocks this in, he's picked up five strokes in five holes. Well, incredible things have happened this day. And this is one of them. Now get it in. You surely couldn't miss it, could you, having got to there in two at a moment like this. He's done it! A round of 69 for Ian Baker Finch. He's six under par. And just one behind Watson now, who still has to hold out. And Baker Finch has played the last four holes of the composite course in 12 strokes. Absolutely astounding. What a thrill in front of this enormous gallery.
Now here's a man who had a lead at one stage of four strokes. And now he struggles to keep his lead of even one. This for a four. Get in. No mistake. <laughs> Around the day of 71 for Tom Watson. In fact, a 70. A round of 70 for Watson. Well, let's look at the overall situation. And Tom Watson is the leader in the championship by one shot going into the final round. He got to nine under at one stage yesterday, but then fell back and uh, had to birdie the 17th to finish with a 70 and to be seven under the card. A shot away, Ian Baker Finch, who fought back superbly. He got to one under after 12 holes yesterday, but then stormed home to finish with a 69 to be just a shot behind Watson. And with him, Mike Clayton, who had a 67 the best round of the day and really came into it with a vengeance. Three shots from the leader, Roger Davis, who had a 69, and Greg Norman, who had a 71. And then at three under par, four away from the leader, a Terry Gale, Peter Senior, and Bob Stanton, and a shot behind them, Jamie Crow, Wayne Grady, and also New Zealander Simon Owen. Well, now, Tom Watson driving from the first. Good looking swing. Very long hitter. His length is really underrated in golf. Ian Baker Finch. I don't know who the gallery wants to win, said Jack. Yeah. Fine tee shot. Well, what a trio, trio this is. Watson, Baker Finch, and now Norman. Big ones, one of those nice smooth swings he puts on the ball. Yes, well, he didn't need great length down this first hole. He was just looking for position. That's the second of Norman's. Oh, that's the three card trick. There's Baker Finch 24. Probably the most critical shot of the championship. This must make four here. And that's just what can happen. He knew he couldn't love it on the cut surface. Let's see what he does. Yeah, exactly the same thing. To hit it past the hole was the safe thing to do. But right. They, they tried to get it near. Now, can they get it near again? Look out. Oh! Now, look at it go. That's a better one, better than Norman's. Now Watson done his homework, so here's the putt. The opening putt for the leader. This for a three. Up the hill and into the cup. No, not quite. He had a oh. few like that yesterday. He had a lot like that yesterday, Peter. That's a four for Tom Watson. Now, Norman for his five at this opening hole. Par four, seemingly a very easy hole, and yet here it is. He's got to hold this for a five. And he does. Well, that's a stroke dropped for him. So it puts him one further behind. This one of Baker Finch, also for a five. Yeah, no mistake about that. But that's a stroke dropped, and uh, boy, that can really hurt. And this is for an eagle three at the second. Sound for it the first to start. And certain other charge putties coming down the slope from the back of the green here. Roger Davis. Good touch. That's a certain four. Good birdie.
that's what it is. Good four for Davis. Now just two behind Watson at five under par. Let's say that's going to be a bad blow for Mike Clayton. Not happy. We'll confirm this for you shortly, but we believe that was a six. Excellent putt, Gail. Good four. And his back must be improving, but he picked the one out himself, Graham. Fourth tee. Watson finds this dangerous hole. Danger because it's pretty rough both sides. And he's gone across the fairway into a little bit of uh, nasty stuff there. Should come out of there with not a lot of spin on it. And he'll know about that. Uh, that's uh, gone astray from that lie. And that is down in trouble. This. Now, did he hit it? I believe he did. Oh, no, there's one of our 16,000 uh, metres of cable. Now, I believe he's played three. Yes, he has played, that's certain. And he, uh, he's allowed to move uh, anything loose and, and dead. Uh, just a little practice chop stroke there. So he's going to bump it into that slope and hope that uh, it gets this, the right check to get someone near the cup. They're just scuffling up the bank. Not a lot of cheers for that either. Now, did he make it? Well, he's had four. He's not on the green yet. Well, this is one of the first sensations, I think, of the day. What more to come? Now he's playing his fifth stroke, and unless he keeps it cool, he could easily take three more. Flag out. Could have left it in. Now here's the fifth shot. On its way. And a little bit more to do. Watson has this for a double bogey at a score of six under, which means it will be joint championship leaders, Baker, Finch and Watson. Nice putt too. Well hold. That's a six. Now the seventh tee, Roger Davis up first. In that car, if he pops it in, in one. Out, stop. That's a rather nasty spot. There's not much of this green at all. <laughs> Very tiny thing. Oh, that's a beauty. That just trickled by, didn't it? Well, today it's on the steepest part of the green there. And the furthest back that it gets all week. Now, Clayton. Really, you've got a fire for the centre of the green here. Almost ignore the flag. That wind uh, just coming up, dying away, coming up, dying away. Mostly from the south. Though. It's really a very pleasant day here at Royal Melbourne. Looking swing. Uh, 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 uh. No, he's overshot again. That's the second time in the, the opening seven holes that he's gone too far. Michael Clayton at the seventh. That's his second shot. Davis for a three. Rather a long putt. Remember, he just overshot by a, just a metre or two, but then he had to chip downhill. And it raced away past the cup. And yet again, did on the last hole, he's got to hold a rather long putt for a par, which he does! <laughs> Look at the fire on his face. Now he's getting a good uh, worm's eye view up the slope. And now he'll have his practice putt. 
practice swing. Two practice swings into the putt. Aiming to the right. Turn. And in. Well done. <laughs> well, it looked simple, didn't it? 32 for Terry Gale. Just one behind the leaders now at five under par. Well, we mentioned that earlier, uh, that someone like Terry Gale uh, is uh, not in the leading group, Peter. Um, while the, everyone expected the winner to come from that leading group, someone like Terry Gale coming from behind could really put the pressure on these uh, this last trio. Yes, indeed. We've got a great championship brewing here. Oh, now look at that. He just gave that a, a short stroke and it went away like mad. Play three on this par three seventh. Well, Davis just popped that in. About twice as long as that on that track. Now, confident stroke to the right lip. I don't want too confident to come in. <laughs> This would be in probably a three quarter eight or a big nine iron for Greg Norman. Of course, once it goes up the hill, the breeze can affect it. Oh, oh. Well, he's aimed the ball left, thinking the breeze would blow the ball back to the right. Remember, the breeze is coming from left to right. This was recorded, Ian Baker Finch's tee shot at the seventh. Well, Peter, they're all falling for the same trap, aren't they? Yep. Heading too far, misjudging that wind. Now Tom Watson with his last chance to make a hole in one and make that great prize there of the BMW car. That's a fine shot from Watson. The question will be what type of shot he attempts to play. Will he play it like a bunker shot and explode it? Or will he, which it appears he will. It's a bad break for Baker Finch. I'm sure he'd much rather have the ball in the bunker. shot really was a good shot but he's upset because the ball didn't stop now Norman from the other side of the green left remember in the bunker a much simpler shot than what Baker Finch had oh my goodness and look at that ball race past the hole and Baker Finch with an extremely big putt for a par three at the seventh be a bogey drop back to five under and of course with Watson sitting you know very near the flag it could be a two-stroke swing you know an uphill right to left putt he can afford to be positive Another lip out for Watson. He really is fighting with the putter, so to speak. Greg Norman after that great bunker shot. This for a par three. Well done. That's two great saves at the last two holes for Norman. Now, Simon Owen, who was at four under. And of course, four under is just two behind. This is his second shot at the ninth. 
man who almost won the Open at St Andrews. With Jack Nickbaus eventually won. That's a pretty good shot. Putting for a birdie three. There's only two behind, so... It's a big putt for him. But he had it right on line, just a little bit short. Taps it in for his four. Outward half of 33, Owen, four under for the championship. This is Terry Gale preparing his second shot. It's great par four. These are really the tough holes here at Royal Melbourne, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Second shot. Oh, what a great shot. My word, he's playing well today. Really peppering the flag. Michael Clayton has driven it too far to the right in the trees. He's chipped out, and this is his third shot. So he needs a good one here to have any hope of saving par. Into the breeze. Shot two. He's got it. You beauty. Oh. <laughs> and that is an out with nine of 32 for Terry Gale. Three under par. He goes to six under for the championship and the equal leader. A difficult puddle though. It wasn't a long one. And we've now got a tie for the lead. And Clayton it's five so that's another another stroke drop for Clayton now Watson with this putt for a fourth a tenth big putt remember Gale who's also the joint leader with him looks like could be staring a bogey in the face so if he were to hole and I'll take five. He'd be the outright tournament leader. Oh. Well, the frustrations of Tom Watson continue. He just can't seem to get the ball in the hole. So he drops back to five under, and just for a moment, we have a new championship leader in Terry Gale. Now back to Terry Gale, who's as this putt to remain championship leader. Remember, he's six under. Tom Watson dropped a stroke at the previous hole. And after finding the, the bunker from the tee, this would be a, a great save for Terry Gale. That left lip will cut a little to his right. Just set it outside the hole, Jack, didn't he? It's yeah, a good stroke. He couldn't afford to give the hole away, so we've now got a four-way tie lead. Scale takes a bogey to drop back to five under. Now, Michael Clayton can salvage something from the wreck, having bogeyed the ninth and the tenth. This putt for a birdie three at the eleventh. Yes. Great comeback from Clayton. Davis from the edge of 11. Third shot. Look how fast that patch of turf is. And Davis, after that beautiful chip down the slope, this tap in for par. Jack mentioned we have four 
joint championship leaders two walking off the 11th green and two on the 11th fairway fantastic situation here at Royal Melbourne in the final round of the National Panasonic Australian Open Baker Finch Davis Gale and Watson all at five under and just one stroke behind the veteran on the comeback trail Bob Stanton This for birdie three. Get yourself around. Come on. You beauty. We've got another equal leader. Oh, oh, oh. Bob Stanton. What a wizard. Up at the 17th. The third shot of Bob Stanton. About 120 metres. 9-9. Nine -nine. Beautiful shot, my word, he's just some lovely iron shots through this championship, Peter. Sure has. Good oh, chance yeah. of birdie there. Now, what a putt for Bob Stanton. This for birdie is 17. Up the hill. Realistic chance, get up and in. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Stanton, new beauty. Now back to Roger Davis. This putt for a four. Final green. Big swing from right to left. Similar line to Bob Stanton's putt. Cost him out right third place. And a lot of money. His bag manager won't like that, Grant. Bogey five for Davis. Round the day of 73, and he finishes the championship at three under par. Now, back to Terry Gale's fourth shot at the 17th from the greenside bunker. The charge we expected from some of our youngsters hasn't eventuated, and it's been left to the old stages to offer the challenge to Tom Watson. So this for five, Terry Gale. Uphill, right to left. Four under. This putt to remain, sir. Mm. Great attempt. But first it will be Baker Finch. Rather disappointing round today for him and a lot of his supporters because uh, after that marvellous finish of his yesterday, there were high hopes all round that he would do it again and pull it off. Well, it hasn't happened, but uh, he's got many years yet to win championships, and he's sure to win this one, I think, many times. That's a great result. But he'd have that very curling putt that uh, Stanton had and that Davis had. And there's Norman off in that uh, gap in the crowd to the right. That's him looking into the sun, but it's Watson's shot. Now, let's uh, have a look. Great men have uh, an ability to do great things at moments like this. Let's see. This championship is not over until he gets four. Now he's hit it too far. He's hit it almost to the point we saw Terry Gale, and Terry Gale three putted from there, so this championship is not over. Now there's Norman walking back. Well, he's got a great angle to the flag. He's not involved in the fight for the championship, but he's after a good placing. He's sharing third place. If he could get a birdie, he'd have it all on his own. Now he can't be more than 120 or 30 meters from the hole, so that is a colossal hit on this final hole of 395. You work it out for yourself. Just a, I suppose, a three-quarter pitch shot with a wedge. Pin in the right front corner. 
sort of a basin there on the green. Get it in there, the ball will settle down below the cup. He's in good chance of a three. Now right up into the sun, high, and it will stop. Too short. A lot of tension now on this. Everybody quiet and uh, some people, I suppose, sitting on the edge of their chairs. Here he is. Five times Open Champion of Britain. Will he add this one now to his record? Now that's a very gentle putt. Now that is the worst putt. No, I take it back. Well, he knew more than I did. <laughs> oh, dear me. I thought really that he'd hit that far too gently, but he knew what he was doing. There's no doubt about him. This is his first experience at Royal Melbourne Greens, and I must say that uh, it's amazing the way he's judged the speed and the pace by looking at them carefully. Now, up, up, up. Good putt. Full marks. But uh, no luck. So, a lot hanging on this. And a very difficult putt it is indeed. He must start this putt uh, half a metre or so to the right of the cup. And he must be careful not to give it too much. That's a good try. Oh, bad luck. That happened to Stanton and it happened to Davis. Very good second shot, deserved better. So he will hold out. Everything very tense here now. I don't think uh, anybody is making much of a noise. All eyes focused on the green, on these putts. Well, that's a pity. That's a shame. It's a round of 76 today for Baker Finch, and he finishes the championship two under par. Now, as I suggested, I think Watson asked Norman to cut out, even though he's further away. 73 today, and Norman finishes the championship three under, and tied for third place with Roger Davis. And this is it. He won't waste much time. Well done, Tom Watson. 72 today, par figures. And Tom Watson wins the 1984 National Panasonic Australian Open Championship with a seven under par total of 281. The winner by just one stroke from Bob Stanton. Well, Tom, a hard earned win, a par round to do it by one stroke. A satisfying one? Well, it was a difficult round in that uh, uh, I never got much of a lead, and then I made a double bogey up early to, to put every, pull everybody in in close again like I did yesterday, and uh, I feel very lucky lucky to have won. I, uh, nobody really made a good charge at me, and, and it, did, it seemed like uh, none of our threesome uh, could, could get it going any, uh, either, and it was, uh, it was difficult out there uh, from, from that standpoint. Nobody could make a putt. Usually, if somebody starts making some putts early, it makes a whole threesome make a lot of putts, and nobody made anything. I think we made six birdies between us, and it was, it was a struggle out there for the three of us. You said to me, I think on the second day, you don't get angry on this course. Uh, what about when you're not making those putts and you're going so close the way you were? Uh, I, hit, I hit some good shots today. I didn't, quite, I didn't play quite as well as I did the day before, uh, but uh, uh, I was confident in the way I was playing, hitting the ball. I, I drove the ball uh, well, and uh, I kept the ball in play very well off the tee. And it was, uh, uh, it was satisfying from that standpoint. The putting was difficult. The greens are treacherous. Uh, maybe not as treacherous as they have been in years past, but uh, they, they certainly scare the daylights out of me as several putts, especially that last putt coming down that hill. It was a beauty. Congratulations. We better go to the presentation. Thank you.